Hello and welcome. Thank you for viewing this essential presentation on supporting students with brain injuries in Douglas County School District. My name is Dr. Peter Thompson. I'm the coordinator for the brain injury team in Douglas County. The other coordinator, Paulette Joswick, is also the director of health services. This presentation provides a brief overview of our process and protocols to support children with brain injury, especially those for special education purposes. This presentation is not designed to replace more extensive training regarding pediatric brain injury or other pediatric neurological issues. For more in-depth information on this subject matter or our process, please contact your school nurse. An appropriate starting point for this presentation is to remind the viewer of the absolute critical nature the brain plays not only in a child's success at school, but also extends to all other aspects of his or her life. A healthy functioning brain, after all, is directly related to a person's quality of life. As intuitive as this sounds, it is worth emphasizing that the brain can be conceptualized as the ultimate control mechanism for humans. For special education reasons, it is vital to understand that all learning disabilities are the result of a brain-based dysfunction. When a student has significant difficulty learning, there is usually a neurological factor involved. Next, most significant emotional disabilities, or SED, have neurological substrates. In short, the brain is 100% responsible for who we are. It controls our ability to think, to feel, to act, to understand our world around us, to have relationships, to love, and to be loved. When a child's brain is damaged, it changes them at a fundamental level. Children's brains are fragile, and they're prone to permanent damage that can skew their developmental trajectory many times leading to poor outcomes. So why is traumatic brain injury or TBI important to understand? Well first, TBI is classified by the Centers for Disease Control as a major public health problem. It is also a problem that is hurting hundreds of thousands of students every year. Secondly, special education staff are now required by law to properly identify TBI on a child's IEP. Next, how we identify TBI on an IEP can take a few different paths. Although medical documentation of a traumatic brain injury is still the most desirable route to take, it isn't always necessary or available. We can now use professional judgment based on a key concept called, quote, credible history. Finally, remember that all decisions to place a student in special education programming is a team decision. The team approach is strictly endorsed in Douglas County School District. So now let's take a look at how brain injuries are typically classified. First, a brain injury can be caused by external forces such as an object hitting the body or the head that causes brain damage. Or, a brain injury can be caused by internal factors, such as certain types of neurological diseases. For this presentation, we are concerned with externally caused brain injuries, as these are categorized as traumatic brain injury. Mild brain injuries are called concussions, as depicted on the left side of this chart. While brain injuries that produce noticeable deficits or difficulties in a person are usually classified as moderate to severe injuries. Generally speaking, most concussions will completely recover in about 10 to 21 days. Moderate to severe brain injuries, however, can take many years to heal, and unfortunately, some severe brain injuries never re fully recover. This slide depicts the common terms typically used to describe concussions, which are by far the most numerous type of brain injury we deal with in Douglas County School District and in the nation. It is offered to the viewer that such terms minimize the seriousness of concussions. When talking to parents, you are advised to use the term mild brain injury instead of concussion to relate to the parent the seriousness of this injury. As noted previously, any type of brain injury in a child has the potential to radically alter his or her life course. 
A child's brain is still in the fragile developmental stage and should be guarded against trauma and neurological insults. It is dangerous to believe that a brain injury in a child is not as serious because a child's brain is, quote, flexible or malleable. Actually, current research suggests that an adult brain is far better able to handle trauma than a child's brain. This slide illustrates the federal definition of brain injury for the IEP. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA, definition uses similar language found in other IDEA disability definitions. As dry as this slide may be, and I know it's not exciting, it is still worth taking the time to read and read it carefully to understand its meaning. The Individual with Disabilities Education Act defines traumatic brain injury as an acquired injury to the brain caused by an external force resulting in total or partial psychosocial impairment or cognitive impairment that adversely affects a child's educational performance. This is key to understand, just like with other IDEA disabilities for the IEP, it must adversely affect their education or academic performance. While some school districts may handle brain injuries differently, I believe that Douglas County School District has one of the most effective processes in the country. Our strength lies in the fact that we strive to be highly collaborative and have a clear protocol based on best practices. Now let's take a look at our process. Typically, a school social worker or nurse uncovers that a student has a brain injury in his or her past. The building level team contacts the school nurse. On step two, the team reviews the case with the nurse and the nurse tries to solve the problem at the lowest level possible. If the nurse needs help or determines that district level traumatic brain injury team needs to be involved, a formal referral will be made by the nurse and the team. The nurse makes the formal referral and then there is brain injury team involvement. When the brain injury team becomes involved, we typically review files, we discuss the case, we look at testing and other neurological issues. We try to meet with the school team personally, but many times we can do this via email or phone calls. We set expectations with the team about how the traumatic brain injury affects the student. What do we expect that their injury will cause in the academic setting, in the setting outside of school. Sometimes we provide interventions, but many times the school level team is doing a very good job providing those interventions and the interventions just need to be tweaked slightly as guided by the brain injury team. Finally, we connect the family to resources, especially the Brain Injury Alliance of Colorado. We follow up several weeks, if not months later. Please note that the brain injury team does provide limited neuropsychological testing. However, we work in close conjunction with the special ed team at the building level so our time is more effective and the testing can be done efficiently. We will now turn to traumatic brain injury resources. Not to overwhelm the viewer, the traumatic brain injury team has selected what we think are the most effective and current resources that have high utility. You may pause this presentation to copy down these important websites. These websites, the Colorado Co-Kids with Brain Injury, the Colorado Department of Education, and the Brain Injury Alliance of Colorado, or BIAC, are critical resources not only for the school practitioners, but for the families. One of my favorite resources, and a resource that Douglas County School District helped create for the state, is the CoKids website. Not only can professionals find high-level guidance here, you can direct parents to the proper sections for help. If you access this website, go to the Educators and Professionals section and click on it. It will take you to an area described on the next slide. On the far right side of this section of the CoKids website, you will see documents to download. Please click or download this brain injury flowchart. This flowchart provides you with a step-by-step -step process on how to identify a child with a brain injury on an IEP. It will also show you how to properly identify a child with a TBI 
in the absence of medical documentation. Please note that the TBI team encourages you to contact a TBI team member, such as your school nurse, in these cases. This section of the website will also delineate what is known as credible history. Describing credible history in depth goes beyond the scope of this particular presentation. Just know that in the absence of medical documentation, you will need to find several resources to corroborate that a TBI did in fact take place. This next web resource is the CDE website that contains a superb manual called the Brain Injury in Children and Youth, a manual for educators. This professional manual is free and was also created with the help of Douglas County School District. In this manual, you will find truly excellent intervention ideas. This is the cover of the Brain Injury in Children and Youth, a Manual for Educators guide. Again, it is free to download on the CDE website. Finally, you need to be aware of a state resource for all children that have difficulty related to the traumatic brain injury. The resource is called the Youth Brain Injury Connections, or YBIC for short. YBIC provides educational advocacy, parent training, student support, and other resources for the child and the family. These resources are funded by the Colorado Department of Human Services through a specific fund called the TBI Trust Fund. To access the YBIC website, go to the Brain Injury Alliance of Colorado, or BIAC, website and scroll down to the very bottom of the page. You will see the YBIC link. On this YBIC webpage, you will see an online referral form, which is depicted here in this slide. The online referral form is simple and free for families, but I encourage you to help the family complete this form. When the family completes this form, it is sent to the YBIC Center. Professionals at YBIC will then contact the family and connect them with various resources. Again, this is a very important resource for all families that have children who have an IP that are identified with traumatic brain injury. So this concludes our presentation. Please remember to contact your school nurse first for brain injury questions as all nurses are on the TBI team. You can also contact me or Paulette Joswick via email or phone. Thank you and thank you for making a difference in the lives of children you serve.